Hey folks, welcome back to part three of the Kennedy 12 build. And this video is a standalone wiring video because I think it'll serve as a nice resource for people uh, later on down the line. So when I do one of these builds, um, it's good to grab a piece of notebook paper or like a dry erase board here and, and kind of sketch everything out. So for this build, we're gonna have a bunch of different LEDs of different colors. Uh, we're gonna have two 6500s. We're gonna have these big monster 058 citizens out of the corners. They'll be 3000 Kelvin. We'll have a UV bulb. And then the central smaller citizens will be 3500K followed by some far reds. So that gives us five different channels. That would be five timers taking up five plugs, five different things that could fail, five things that you would have to set. So the goal in this project is to make it to where you could just plug it in and it'll work with the controller. So to tackle a project like this and to tackle this project, I, I like to start with the AC in. Now I'm wiring this up for 110 volt US, but if an uh, in international winner wins, uh, I'll communicate with that person and we'll convert it over to their country's voltage because all of these components that I'll be using are universal. So people ask me all the time, can you attach multiple drivers to a single power cord? And the answer is yes. I use these Wago 222 connectors. They're great for connecting multiple drivers, connecting power cords like this one here, where you could just cut the end off and use it as a power cord. And I'll leave a link to these Wago solderless connectors in the description of this video, along with some other wiring components. But what I'm gonna use these Wagos for in this build is like a terminal block, like you would use in a fuse box. So each Wago uh, will cover each leg of the electricity, one for hot, one for neutral, and one for earth or ground. The component that I'm using here, this AC to DC solid state relay, is something you probably haven't seen on this channel. It allows the DC signal from the storm controller to interface with AC electricity. And you need to do this to shut down the big Meanwell HLG drivers. They only dim from 100% down to 10%. And so you would still have to time them to get them to turn off for your 12 hour flowering period. So I'm gonna use a relay for this purpose, eliminate basically three timers and use the all-in-one feature of the Storm X interfacing with the solid state relay. But when I built Canopy 10, one of the annoying things is that I have to go into the controller to do manual controls. So I wanted to add manual switches as like you're walking into the grow room, you want to flip a light off or you want to flip the UV off, which is probably recommended when you're working in there. So I want to include switches on each channel, which complicates the wiring and complicates the build a little bit. But I'll show you that later as we go into live. This won't be an all dry erase board video. Uh, I'll go into some live wiring in a second. Now, We'll use a relay to switch off the AC power to all the HLGs. We'll need to do the same thing for the T5 UV bulb because it doesn't have any DC input. It's just plug it in or not. So we'll use a relay for that as well. Because we don't have a zero to 10% dimming functionality on the HLGs, I wanted to do a build where you could ramp up from 1% up to 10%. And I'll use the 6500K cobs for this purpose and also to demonstrate that you don't necessarily need to use an hlg driver to run a cob you can use meanwell ldd on the rapid four up board which i'll show here so basically i'll have ac power coming into a 36 volt supply which will go into the rapid four up board which all it does is take the two amp current from the supply and regulate that current to the cobs so it keeps it nice and consistent so I'll be using a thousand milliamp LDD drivers basically to run each of the 6500s. And there'll be two additional slots available if the owner of the light wants to uh, upgrade later on. Now the controller, like I mentioned, is a storm controller from Rapid LED and it only controls zero to five volt drivers. Because the Meanwell HLG that are so common are zero to 10 volt, you need this little analog bump up thingy here. It bumps it up to a zero to 10 volt signal. So that four of our channels will be zero to 10 volt and we'll have two zero to five volt. Now to run and power the Storm X, you need this dongle thing that I hate because they take up so many spots on a six strip and you know, you need another plug and another cord. So I want to eliminate that altogether and replace that with this basically the same thing, but a hardwired version. This is the Meanwell APV 2512, 12 volts, about two amps. So it'll do 25 watts. So that will power the controller as well as power the far reds. 
Now, because I'm only going to be using four far reds in this build, it's only about 10 volts worth of drive that's needed. So I don't want to run it off the 36 volt supply and have all that extra voltage sitting in the LDD. So I'll run a separate driver running off of this 12 volt supply that'll run the far reds. So far reds and the controller is all this thing will do. And when the fixture's energized, the controller will stay on. So if the fixture's plugged in, the controller stays on. Now the controller has a battery in it that will retain your settings. So if you do choose to plug a light like this into a timer and it loses power, that's fine. It'll come back on and retain your settings. But this light, I want it to be designed to where you could just plug it into the wall without a timer and everything will go to plan with your normal flowering photo period and all the other functionality. I know it looks complicated, but stick with me here and we will get through this, I promise. Okay, so let's see what some of this stuff looks like in real life. I bought a 3D printed case for the Storm X, but it just wasn't quite sexy enough. So I laser cut this back plate out of the red acrylic that holds the Storm X controller and its adjustment knob, the four switches, and the power in. So we're going to be using a standard CPU uh, computer power supply in, uh, standard on all HPS ballasts and stuff like that. You know, that way uh, cords will be universal for 220 volt or 110. And then here's a little closer shot of the solid state relay that we'll be using to interface the StormX to AC components like Meanwell HLG drivers. Now this part of the project was not water jet. It was sort of an afterthought. So I had to cut out with the Dremel. So please don't make fun of the ugly Dremel cutout. I will go back when it's all done, put a little silicone in there so that none of the burrs from the metal uh, score any of the wires or anything like that. So we'll pop the four switches in. You can see here I've got just basic wire leads coming from the CPU AC power in. And those will go into the Wago terminal blocks like I suggested. Now you can buy some accessories for these Wagos that are like mounting plates and stuff like that. But I'm just using some 3M industrial uh, sticky tape here because they just need to hold in place to keep everything organized while I'm wiring before I put all the cable ties and stuff like that. So we'll have one for each leg, one for hot, one for neutral, and one for ground. This way, anything that interfaces with these little orange levers will be energized as long as the fixture's plugged in. And I just love these things. I mean, like I said earlier, tying any wires together without solder and without ugly wire nuts, they're super pro. Like I mentioned earlier, coming off of these little Wago blocks, we can go right into the switch that says 6500K because it can be energized. It's fully DC controllable down to 0%. Now for the other ones, we got to make a quick pit stop into the relay. So the black wire, the hot wire, comes directly out of this orange connector into the relay and it basically interrupts it before going into the switch. And it's done that way for the UV as well. Interrupt the hot, that way the DC control wire, basically, this it's just a switch. And the DC control tells the switch to be either be on or off. Now for all the white wires, those can go directly right into the switch. For 110 volt, it's neutral, it's fine. These switches that I'm using are dual pole switches, which means that it switches both the hot and the neutral, or in a 220 volt situation, it switches on and off both hot legs. In 220, you have 210 volt. That's what makes up the 220. So this is basically just getting the AC power distributed into the switches. This is somewhat of the hard part. Once we're past this stage, we can treat it like a traditional installation and just wire the drivers right into the switches. Now, for the 058 and the 048, basically all the citizens, they do have separate switches, but they're controlled by a single relay. I wanted to do this because I didn't want to have a ton of relays in here because they do generate some heat in the fixture. But also, the way I'll run it is that the storm controller will have one dedicated channel that will be a photo period channel. It'll be channel number one. So that way the user can just set channel number one to let's say 8 a.m. on to 8 p.m. off, and they don't really have to worry about much else. As long as that's set, they're not going to screw up their photo period and, and photo cycle and have Hermes and stuff like that. Now, the APV1212, like I mentioned, is just hardwired. So when you plug in the fixture, it is on supplying 12 volts to the Storm X via this little uh, DC barrel connector. I've got a link for that in the description of the video. So that's energized as well as energizing the far red driver. Now, the, the, the downside to doing it this way is that the far reds will need to be under some level of control from the controller, otherwise they'll just come on. But 
it's not that big of a deal because far reds tell the plants to go to sleep. So if there is a malfunction, it'll just tell the plants to go to sleep, even if they're already asleep. Now, the final part is just connecting the AC cords from the drivers, which is pretty easy, just a little tedious. Everything, every connection here is soldered. I didn't use any crimp or, you know, quick connects or anything. I, I just couldn't, you know, <laughs> I just wanted it to be solid when I'm sending it to someone else's house. And then the UV cord, I just cut the plug end off of it, and it will go into the switch marked UV that's regulated by the relay, controlled by Stormex channel number six. I know, I know, it's a complicated build, but we're gonna get through this. That's why I did the dry erase diagram on the front side of this video, because when you get into this wiring spaghetti mess before it's organized, it's just, it's hard on a video to see. Now, for powering the DC 36 volt supply that'll power the 6500K Crees, I'm using some four conductor wire. I've got it linked in the description as well. That way I can supply the AC power that's needed for the converter and the DC power back in just one nice and neat wire. Now the grounding for this thing, I just grounded it to the case. This entire metal panel here, the entire aluminum piece is grounded to earth. So anything that touches the metal is going to be grounded, which is, you know, just recommended for your safety. You can always replace components, but the one thing you can't replace is you if you die. Uh, so mounting the rapid LED four up board, I've got four screws in the back with some nylon nuts. The back of this thing is a printed circuit board. It does have solder connections on it. So using a plastic spacer, which is included or nylon or some non-conductive nut to uh, create an air gap between the metal and the board is highly recommended and absolutely necessary or the whole, whole board will short out. So just doing that, getting it mounted nice and secure. And this is where the Meanwell LDD 1000 milliamp drivers will just plug into. The nice thing about boards like this and, and running setups with boards like this is if the little $7 drivers blow, you pull them out with your fingers and you can replace the driver. And it's pretty great. Several hours later and through the magic of movie editing, I finally got this thing all wired. And what I didn't really cover here was just wiring the cobs together, which in, in my estimation is pretty simple. It's just a single wire, positive and negative in series. And we already discussed all the different channels. If you need more information on series wiring cobs, check out my like part three DIY LED basics. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. Um, so basically it's about time to test. And I wanna test the controller functionality. I wanna test the relay functionality. I made myself a little list here and uh, I'll probably make some little labels or something and put it right on the fixture so that the winner knows what's going on. But there's six channels on the controller and six different levels of adjustment. Um, I wanted the person to be able to have zero to 10% dimming capability. So that's why these 6500Ks are wired in this manner. Each driver, each cob has its own little um, LDD driver, which will go from zero to 100%. So it's dark, you imagine uh, the plants are just waking up, you can start at 1% as opposed to like starting at 10%. So I'm testing it manually via the controller spin wheel and at 30%, it supplies enough voltage to kick on the relay to turn on the UV, so I'm good there. We can set that timer functionality to run for about 30 minutes in the middle of the day and just test it on our plants and we have a switch to turn it on and off. These are the 6500Ks that can start out at 1% and go up to 100. And I, I just think that'll be really nice. Not that the plants really care. I mean, plants have been growing for a long time with the lights just flipped on, but if you're building a cool light, might as well have the cool features. And I chose 6,500 here just because this light has so much wattage that we didn't necessarily need to concentrate on the 3,000 to 4,000 K spectrum. I wanted this person to be able to have that really, really blue. And you can tell these 6,500s are are super blue so because they don't need the wattage we got about 70 watts of like blue here um, that this person can either choose to run or run halfway or full whatever they'd like but the goal of this fixture was not necessarily to just plug it in and have it run full out because i think it's way more than you need for a four by four and it's about perfect for what you'd need for a five by five so testing scrolling the wheel up as soon as you get to 30 percent on the scroll wheel the relay kicks in now the way it'll run when the user has it is the 30% will just kick on the ability to turn the drivers on and the LEDs themselves will come on at 10%, which is their default. But what I'm noticing here is that the four corner lights are running, the two center lights are running, the UVs are running, but the six outer lights aren't running. So I've got a problem. 
And this is where you really need a multimeter. Now, a multimeter is about seven bucks at Harbor Freight. And when you have a problem, the first thing you wanna do is switch it into AC volts. See if the driver's getting power from the wall. And if you can see here in this fairly dark image in the bottom corner, I'm getting 120 volts at the wall. So I know the thing's got AC power, so that's good. Next, you set it into DC volts to see, is the driver putting out a voltage? And you check that by just checking the positive and the negative leads coming out of the driver. If you already have it wired up onto the cobs themselves, you can just insert your little testing probes right into the pins on the cob holder. Do you have voltage? So I'm just checking the first cob here to see like, do we have a voltage? Yes, we do. And then I'll check the actual leads to the driver to see what voltage we're getting. We're getting about 245 volts. So that's good. It, it could be a wiring problem, but it isn't. <laughs> it's a brain fart problem or just being a dumbass problem or, or whatever you want to call it, an ordering issue, human error. So this seems like a good time to talk about like what citizen... Uh, means what the numbers mean because Cree, you know, they have their 36 volt, the 72 volt version, but with Citizen, you got a lot more numbers. So CLU is the line, that's the cob line, and the 048 or the 058 is the diameter. Then you have all these numbers that come after that the 1212, 1818, 1825. The first two numbers is how many LEDs are in series in this die of LEDs. A cob is 100 to four or 500 LEDs. So this particular LED should have 144 LEDs, 12 in series, 12 in parallel, and that gives us 36 volts. What ended up happening was, I guess I ordered the 1818s, which are a 50 volt cob, which exceeds the voltage that the driver has. The driver only has 238 volts, and I'm trying to run 300 volts worth of cobs, and it just isn't working. So the driver on the left is what was in it the HLG 240C1050B dimmable driver. It has 238 volts at 1050 milliamps. And the CLU 048-1818s that I'm trying to run just won't run it at 50 watts. What I wanted and what I should have ordered was the CLU 048-1212, which would have run it at 35 watts. So the options are swap drivers or swap all the chips. Now, since I had a 700 milliamp version driver on hand, I can run these larger 50 volt chips at the desired wattage. So I just swapped out the driver from a 1050 down to a 700 and haven't really affected the original design at all other than just a, a couple voltage numbers on a spec sheet. So we'll try testing it again. The 6500s are working great, smooth dimming up and down. The camera, you know, screws up a little bit with the PWM signal. Uh, the UV is still working good. That's great. And we've got full power. So I'm happy. I threw this thing on a kilowatt and we're getting a whopping 815 watts. 440 of that is coming from the four corner cobs. They're running about 110 watts each on these big, massive SSTX heat sinks. Um, 70 watts for the 6500 got about 15 watts for the UV and then the remaining are the 3500k smaller citizen cops but this thing is a beast 815 watts I don't even think you should run it at 815 watts whoever wins I would probably run it between 650 and 7 but you've got that juice when you need it you know the whole premise is create a grow light that has more than you need so that when you do need it you've got it but you don't necessarily have to use it all and I think that'll be really cool so we'll button this up and I'll do one more video announcing the winner and going a little more into the Storm X functionality. I'll show you the menus and what it can do. And be sure to watch us on the round table tonight to see who wins this light. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. It'll be a couple days, but I'll see you then.